record button, okay? You don't need to worry about the record button. There are four major points that I'd like to highlight in today's khutbah. 
Therefore, I request your undivided attention. If you're on your phone, keep your phone aside. You shouldn't be on your phone in the first place. If you're giggling and talking with your buddies and your friends, stop doing that because according to the Prophet wasallam, your Jumu'ah, your reward is destroyed. Because the one who is distracted during the prayer, during the khutbah, his reward is void and null. So do not do that. Pay attention to the khutbah. It's just a few minutes in the entire week that you're dedicating and it's your worship. And then inshallah, we will have a prayer as we always do. So these four points that I want to highlight are number one, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we should gain appreciation of the grandeur of the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then point number two, once we have understood Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his rights upon us, then we should also understand that every single thing that we own, every single possession of ours, whether it's physical, whether it's spiritual, whether it's tangible, whether it's intangible, such as your talents, such as your intellect, such as your beauty, such as your health, all of these belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, Allah being your and my owner, your and my master, has full right to demand from us whatever He wills. So the, the things that you and I think that we own, in reality, do we truly own them? So this is the second point. Now that we've realized who Allah is, number two, the things that Allah has blessed us with, the things that Allah has given us ownership of, Allah can demand them whenever He wills. And He has full right to do so. Point number three is, the one who is sincere in this, who gives Allah what He asks Him, then for them we will discuss what Allah will give back to them. And those who do not, then what is their recompense and their compensation? Point number four is, if we realize in us there is a deficiency, and Allahi, in every one of us there is a deficiency, in me, in you, there are deficiencies. Since there are these deficiencies, how can we overcome these deficiencies? I know it's a very ambitious thing, I'm trying to do four major points and really each one of these points can be a khutbah in its own right. But let us see inshallah in the time that we have how far we get. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions these four points in the first 17 verses of the 57th surah of the Quran. The first 17 verses of surah hadith. And we've discussed surah hadith in the past so we'll quickly summarize one of the first parts that we talk about in the second week of Ramadan. In the second week of Ramadan, we discuss Surah Hadith in the light of Ramadan. But now, once Ramadan is over, let us reassess our situation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins Surah Hadith by talking about Himself, by describing Himself. And what is interesting is, Surah Hadith was revealed in Medina. Surah Hadith was revealed to Muslims. Yet, the defining characteristics of Surah Hadith sound exactly Madani. Sorry, sound exactly Makki. This is a surah that is coming down in Medina four years after the hijrah of the Prophet Allah is addressing the Muslims in Medina, yet it sounds very, very mucky, as if the Muslims don't know who Allah is. Why is this so? Allah is saying, you've lost your motivation. You've lost your iman. Your iman level has gone down. Therefore, it's time to start again. It's time to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again. Allah begins by saying, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ سَبَّحَ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمِ Allah says that everything that is in the skies and the earth praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It praises Allah azza wa jal. It magnifies the glory and the majesty of Allah. You mankind, you're from the best of creation. Where is your glory? Where is your glorification? Where is your praise of Allah? Shouldn't you, being the best of creation, your tasbih and your hamd of Allah, shouldn't it be the best? Yet where has it gone? And He is the most powerful, the one who is Hakim. You are faced by problems in life. You are faced by challenges in life, by tragedies, by ups and downs. Why don't you have trust in Allah? Where is that confidence in the wisdom of Allah? That what Allah is doing to me, this is full of wisdom. وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ لَهُ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ يُحْيِي وَيُمِيدُ وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to him belongs the ownership and the sovereignty of the earth. Don't you and I already believe this, O Muslims? Don't you and I already know that to Allah belongs everything? Yet Allah is telling us again that it looks like you've forgotten this. You're living your lives heedless. You're living your lives as if you don't care. As if you've forgotten that the one who owns this world is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're doing anything that you wish. You're doing what your desires dictate. Have you forgotten this? Yuhyi wa yumit. He is the one who gives life and death. Don't we already know this? That Allah is yuhyi and wa yumit. The one who gives death. Yes, he is the one. وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ And Allah is Qadir. Allah has power and control over everything. Have you forgotten this? Allah says, yes, you have forgotten this. Yes, you've let go of this. Remember, I'm reminding you, Allah is saying, reminding me and you, that Allah is the one who has control over everything. هُوَ الْأَوَّلُ وَالْآخِرُ وَالْظَاهِرُ وَالْبَاقِنُ he is the one who was there from the beginning and the one who will be in the last. When everything shall perish, Allah will be there. He is the one who is apparent and the one who is hidden. Allah is saying, if you are true believers, every single thing that you see around you, it will remind you of Allah. You look at the mountains and the skies, it will remind you of the power of Allah. You look at your handheld device, your computer, instead of remembering Apple and Samsung, you remember Allah Azzawajal is the one who gave mankind this intelligence. That the true believers, that even on the technology, the technology that they're using, they're not going to abuse it. They're not going to use it to disobey their master. Allah is saying, you've forgotten this. That he is the one who is apparent in everything that you see around you, it should remind you of Allah, O true and sincere believers. And yet He is the hidden. Nobody knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His actual form. Nobody has seen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So He is the hidden. Yet He is hidden. Do not think that He does not have knowledge of you. Allah ends this verse by saying that He is fully knowledgeable of everything that you do. He is, I mean, His ilm encompasses everything. In verse number 4, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He is the one who created the skies and the earth in six days, and He rose above the throne in a manner that truly suits His majesty. He is not the king, He is the creator of kings. He has a throne, He has an arsh. He rose above this arsh in a majesty you and I cannot imagine. In a manner that suits Allah's majesty, He rose above the throne. Allah says every single thing that goes into this earth, every single thing that penetrates this earth, whether it is the seeds that are going into this earth and plants that are sprouting forth, or it is you yourself going into your graves, and when and where you will be resurrected, Allah knows everything. Allah says, and he is the one who sends from the sky, from rainwater, to decrees, to punishments, to blessings. Allah is the one who causes them to come from the sky. And from the earth, everything ascends to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every single thing ascends to him. Of our actions, of our deeds, as our Prophet sallallahu told us in Sahih Muslim, that actions are presented to Allah at the end of Mondays and Thursdays. So this is when actions are ascending to Allah. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said that I hope that my actions are presented. My report card, in other words, is presented to Allah while I'm in a state of fasting. And so he would fast Mondays and Thursdays. So our actions ascend to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our deeds ascend to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يَعْلَمُ مَا يَلِجُ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَمَا يَخْرُجُ مِنْهَا وَمَا يَنْزِلُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَمَا يَعْرُجُ فِيهَا وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ أَيْنَ مَا كُنْتُمْ And Allah's companionship is with you wherever you are. You think you can run away? You think the most hideous sin that you're committing, you've hidden it from the whole entire world. You think you can hide it from Allah? He is with you wherever you are. But His support is with those who are sincere to Him. His support is with those who are sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their beliefs, in their actions, in their worship. And Allah over everything you do is an all-seer. Allah says to him belongs the ownership of the heavens and the earth. Did you and I not hear this verse in, in verse number two? The same 
phrase in verse number 2. Allah says, in case you've forgotten, in case you're thinking that I'm above the throne, I'm so far up, you think I'm not aware of what's happening? Then let me remind you again. And to Allah shall return the matters of everything. Your matters, your issues, your deeds, your problems, you yourself will return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You yourself. Allah says that He is the one who causes the night to go into the day and the day to go into the night. Why? Because if you and I truly understood who Allah is, and this is still my first point, by the way, if we truly understand, understood who Allah is, if we truly appreciated the majesty of Allah, our nights and days would change. At the end of every single day, we will sing, SubhanAllah, the night has come. How did I spend my day? And when the night passes, the day comes, Ya Allah, how did I spend my night? Did I pray Isha? Or was I busy on my console, on my computer, on my, in hanging out with my buddies and my friends? How did I spend my night? In front of the television or in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If not in front of the television, at least was it away from the ma'asi, from the sins against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If we truly understood this, our, life, our nights and days will change. And Allah says that He knows what is encased in your breasts. What is encased in your chests, in your hearts, your thoughts, your desires, your temptations, your ambitions, your aspirations, your next move, every single thing Allah is very well aware of. Then Allah says something very shocking. Allah says, Aminu billahi wa rasuli. Allah says, have iman, have faith in Allah and the Messenger. What? The Muslims are being told this? Have iman in Allah and the Messenger? But we already have Iman of Allah. Allah is saying, perhaps your Iman is on your tongue. Your Iman really has not gone to the depths of your heart. You know you shouldn't have that by your fellow Muslim. Yet, you claim to have Iman. The next opportunity you get, you're bullying someone. You're joking about someone else. You're backbiting your neighbor, your friend, your colleague, your brother, your own sister. Maybe your Iman is on your heart. Uh, maybe your Iman is on your tongue. Allah is saying you're coming five times a day to the masjid for sure, but when you borrow money from someone, you're not returning it on time. When you are getting into some kind of misunderstanding with someone, you are the worst in, t in terms of your adab and your akhlaq. You are the worst when it comes to your mouth. Filth comes out from your mouth. Your Iman is really not in your heart. Allah is saying, O oh Muslims, renew your Iman. Our beloved Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our master, Allah Azza wa Jal says, and spend and spend from that which Allah has temporarily given you. Istikhlaf means something that is left behind temporarily. So your health has been given to you temporarily. Your wealth has been given to you temporarily. Your strength, your youth, your life has been given to you temporarily. Allah is saying, now that I've given you all of this mustakhlafina fi, then I need from it. Give me from it. So this is the second point. When we know this is our master, your life will get quenched in the next minute. SubhanAllah, yesterday we heard that there is a brother who got into a very, very painful and very dangerous accident. Young 20-year-old brother. SubhanAllah, you don't have control over your own life. Allah is saying, SubhanAllah, think about this. That I've given you all of this, now I need from this. Now that I've given you the things, SubhanAllah, wouldn't it be enough, O Muslims? Wouldn't it be enough that Allah, the things that He's given us, you and I don't even own it in the first place. He is the one who owns it. He gave these things, these blessings, this wealth, this health, this beauty, this intelligence to us temporarily. And if Allah would have asked it from us, that would have been enough. Khalas, done deal. That would have been enough. But Allah Azza wa Jal says that فَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَأَنْفَقُوا لَهُمْ أَجْرٌ كَبِيرٌ That the one who truly believes, he will spend in the path of Allah. He will give from the things Allah has blessed him with. And for those, Allah says, لَهُمْ أَجْرٌ كَبِيرٌ 
for them is a great reward. For them is a great reward. Think about this. And then if you think to yourself, Ya Allah, then SubhanAllah, I am here, oh Allah, I am here for you. Yeah, I am here to give to you. Then you will be counted from these people. This is what Allah Azza is saying. Aminu billahi wa rasul. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on further and He reminds us that Allah Azza wa Jal is the one who has given us everything and He will multiply it many, many folds. And that is exactly what Ramadan did to us, didn't it, O oh brothers? That's what Ramadan gave to me and you. The opportunity to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in manners in which we couldn't have ever imagined. That the sins that we did, Allah says, then you come back to me. آمنوا بالله ورسوله وأنفقوا مما جعلكم مستخلفين فيه فالذين آمنوا منكم وأنفقوا لهم أجر كبير وما لكم لا تؤمنون بالله يا الله Again, to me and you, Allah is saying. And what is the matter with you that you do not have Iman in Allah? Again, Allah is saying your Iman is so rusty. Your Iman has stood so low that what, what is the matter with you that you do not have Iman in Allah? وَمَا لَكُمْ لَا تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولُ يَدْعُوكُمْ لِتُؤْمِنُوا بِرَبِّكُمْ وَقَدْ أَخَذَ مِنْ ثَرَقَكُمْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Allah says, and amongst you is your messenger. And amongst you is this book. That you are reading this book. That you want to listen to the best party. That you want to recite like the best party. Yet you don't know what this book is telling you. What is the matter with you? How come you don't have Iman? Very, very strict words Allah is using. And what is the matter with you that you do not believe when amongst you is the messenger who is calling you to have Iman in your master? And not just have Iman in your master, the Prophet ﷺ is calling us to proper guidance. And when you have already, you've already signed the contract. Muslims, you've already signed the contract, you've sealed it with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is the matter with you? So if you and I, our response is, no, no, Ya Allah, we have Iman, we have Iman, but our Iman is low, Ya Allah, we're weak. How do we increase this Iman? The next verse tells us. Verse number nine, Allah says, Allah says, you want to come back to me? Then know that he is the one who revealed verses unto his slave who sent down from the sky verses to his slave that are crystal clear. That will take out, that will take you out from darknesses into light. Allah calls misguidance, not one darkness, volum, but darknesses of volumat. Why? Because there are multiple ways to go astray, but there is only one light of guidance. Noor. Allah did not say Noor in the plural. He didn't say Anwar. He said Noor. Multiple ways to go to Jahannam, but there is only one way to go to paradise. Allah says these clear verses, this book, will take you to this proper guidance. This is what Allah is saying. And you know what is interesting, my dear brothers and sisters? What is very interesting is Allah uses this phrase to take someone out from darknesses into light. He uses it for the Kuffar and the disbelievers. He uses it for them. Those who are committing shirk with Allah, then why is Allah using it for me and you? A'udhu billah, Allah is not saying you're kuffar. Allah is not saying you're all become kafir. No. Allah is saying you need to step up to the plate. You need to up your game. You need to come up, increase your level of iman. If you're Muslim, become mu'min. Become the true believers in Allah. Understand that this is the book through which you'll get that hidayah. This is what Allah is saying. And Allah Azzawajal says, Ayatim bayinati yukhrijakum minal dhulumati ilal nur wa inna Allah bikum la ma'ufur rahim ya Allah. Look at the way he ended this verse. Allah did not say, wa huwa shadidul iqab, that he is the most severe in punishment. No. Allah says, and indeed your Allah, wa inna Allah bikum la ma'ufur rahim, he has always continuously been loving, compassionate, gentle, ra'uf. He has been loving and compassionate towards you. You were the one who ran away from Allah. You were the one who continued in your sins. You were the one who forgot about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has always been Rauf and Rahim and the one who would forgive all of your sins no matter how great they are. Have you and I truly understood who Allah is? 
Have you and I truly understood that if we are true believers, then it is nothing, it's not a big deal to sacrifice for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I ask Allah Jalla wa ala to make us from those who truly become believers in Him. I ask Allah to have mercy on the brother who had this accident and those who on a daily basis are suffering from all kinds of diseases. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them shifa, may Allah grant their families patience. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. Barakallahu lana wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Kareem wa nafa'ni wa iyaakum bil ayati wa dhikri al-Hakim inna hu ta'ala jawaad al-Kareem wa kmanikum bar mu'ufu. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله تعالى فهو المبتد ومن يبلغ فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم من حمد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم من حمد مجيد وبعد So from the four points we've seen the first point an appreciation of the majesty and grandeur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah reminds us. And now that we've understood this, then number two, that whatever things that we have, Allah is demanding from us that we make this sacrifice. When you borrow your car, or you borrow whatever thing that you have, whether it's as simple as a pencil or a pen to someone else, you have full right to demand it, right? And when you demand it, they'll give that thing back to you. Do you have to then so say you gave your friend your car, and then after a couple of days, he returned it to you. Are you going to go and get the latest model of that car and return it to him? Hey bro, this is for you. I'm not going to do that. But Allah as the one says, already I'm the one who owns the things that I've given you. When I'm asking you to sacrifice, guess what? I will return to you. I'll return it to you multiplied so many times in ways you can't even imagine. A great reward. Then what is stopping you? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the next verse, in verse number 10, Allah says, وَمَا لَكُمْ أَلَّا تُنْفِقُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَلِلَّهِ مِنْ وَعْفُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Again, strict, stern tones. And something for you and I to think. Don't just go home and think, oh, okay, khutbah was like this, and you know, the brother was ranting, and that's it, I'll live my life. Think about these things, O Muslims. Your book is talking to you. This book is talking to you. Allah Azzawajal is conversing with you. Allah says, and what is the matter with you that you do not spend in the path of Allah? And mind you, this spending is not just dollars. It's not just your money. No. This is your time as well. When you knew that this is, these are the summer holidays, that you are free from college, university, instead of going to the theater to watch the latest blockbuster that came out, you knew that there was this conference coming up. You knew there was this opportunity for me to go and listen to this halaqa, to this dafs. Did you sacrifice your weekend? Did you sacrifice your days? What did you do? This is what spending is. When there were opportunities to volunteer at different places for the benefit of Muslims and non-Muslims, did you volunteer your time? This is what Allah is saying, what is the matter with you? That you're not spending from the things I've given you, from money to health to time to everything. What is the matter with you? And perhaps this may be the last verse that we discuss because of time constraints. Allah Azza says, And to Allah belongs the inheritance of the skies and the earth. When do we talk about inheritance? Do we talk about inheritance of a five-year-old? Inheritance of a two-year-old infant, a baby crying in the lap? Do we talk about inheritance of a 19, 20, 30-year-old? No. We talk about inheritance of people who are middle-aged or people who are in their last stages of their lives. We talk about inheritance of those who will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who are about to die. Allah is saying, Allah is saying to Allah belongs the inheritance of the heavens and the earth, i.e. the heavens and the earth are about to die. Your time is ticking. The clock is ticking. The heavens and the earth are about to perish. To Allah belongs their inheritance. The signs of the Day of Judgment are, are, are all around us. And they're intensifying as we speak. The Prophet, the coming of our beloved Rasul was from the signs of the Day of Judgment. We're not getting any younger from Friday to Friday, from one day to the next, from week to week, year to year, month to month. You're not getting any younger. You're coming closer to your death. Allah is reminding me of you. And what is the matter that you're not sacrificing for Allah? The things that He gave to you in the first place, you don't even own them. 
وَلِلَّهِ مِيرَاثُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ لَا يَسْتَوِي مِنْكُمْ مَنْ أَنْفَقَ مِنْ قَبْلِ الْفَتْحِ وَقَادَرِ Allah Azza wa Jal says, and pay attention to this, Allah says that not similar are those who struggled and who sacrificed in the path of Allah when the times were difficult. As compared to those when life was easy. Not the same are they. Do not get this wrong. Allah is saying, those who sacrificed when the going was tough, when they were surrounded by desires and temptations, when they were surrounded by kufr and all the world is going against them, that is the time when they turn to Allah. Allah says He has a greater appreciation for them. Those are special people. Allah says they are the ones who have a, mag a magnificent reward, a great reward with Allah as compared to those who spent when after the victory came. In other words, when you're with your mom and dad, it's very easy for them to wake you up for Fajr, and yet you're not waking up for Fajr. You are with people who are going to the masjid. It's very easy to come to the masjid, but when you're away from family, when your friends are partying hard, when they're doing the things that they're doing, you say to yourself, no, I'm not going to go in this path. I will wake up for Fajr. My mom and dad are not here for me. I'm still going to wake up for Fajr. Your appreciation the sign of Allah is greater It's greater than the one who is practicing Islam when life is easy and everything is fine and good. But then Allah says, وَكُلَّ But for all of them, for both categories of people, it's a handsome reward. But Allah did make a distinction. He did make a distinction. Wallahu bima ta'amaluna khabir and Allah is very well acquainted of what you do. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us understanding of his book. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who are sincere to him, who sacrifice from their wealth, from their health, from all of the things that Allah has given to us. I ask Allah that he makes us truly understand that when we sacrifice for him, think about the one you're sacrificing for. You're not sacrificing for any human being. That when you sacrifice, you don't even know if you'll get any result. Allah is saying, <coughs> For you, he will increase your reward. Ask Allah as to make us from those who die as Muslims and who are resurrected in the companionship of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Ibad Allah rahmatullah. Inna Allah yamun bi adni wal ihsan wa ita'i bil qurba wa yanha min fashshah wal munkir wal badi yaribu bi ma'adam bi dakkarun. Uzku Allah dikran kathim wa sabbihum bukratum asila wa dikku Allah yakbar. Ahim salam.
صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا Oh, <laughs> 